So Selkirk are the first side onto the park for the 90th playing of the Erlston Sevens final and it will be a repeat of the finals played in 1982, 1990 and 2010 because they will face in the final a Melrose side and here they come Stroon Hutchison showing a wee burst of pace there coming from the side of the, the club rooms onto the park Stephen Turnbull will be our match referee for this final spectators that have been in hospitality a few of them beginning to filter out from the tent and take their positions just on the side of the pitch remains a little cloudy overhead but a, a relatively calm afternoon as we approach 6 o'clock on a Sunday evening pitch that remains in excellent condition and these two squads of players have been refreshed somewhat after the exertions at Pointer Park 24 hours ago but Strun Hutchison and Melrose will get this final underway they've met three times before as we mentioned in the final and that was a well contested kick Selkirk then able to gather and run it just from the edge of their own 22 trying to find a, a little bit of fueled position both these sides will want to settle into the contest. Finlay Whelan's with an early touch going to deck as it's worked its way out towards the right-hand side. Ethan McVicker's going to be a, a crucial player for Selkirk in the final. He's tackled on the edge of the 22. Back it will come towards the, the centre portion of the 22. Now Selkirk looking to try and get a burst of pace. And Arne McComb caught before he can reach the 10-metre line. Recycled Anderson quickly out towards his right-hand side. And again, Grant Sutty is caught just round the ankles. Recycle ball. Selkirk happy to build once again just from the edge of the 22. Down this left-hand side. McComb checks. He's able to evade the, the challenge coming in there from Donald Crawford. Nice offload and now an opportunity here for Win Finlay Whelans. And Finlay Whelans is in. Touches down underneath those posts. And it's a fine start for Selkirk. Finlay Whelans with the opening try. And guys, that was a, a well-constructed score from the edge of their own 22. Yeah, good pace by Young Whelans there. Selkirk, youth club under-18 player, also turned out for the Edinburgh under-18s this season. Probably can count himself a wee bit unlucky not to have toured recently with Scotland under-18s, but didn't get to see him much in the final in what was a drab encounter. But yeah, clean pair of heels by the youngster there. Selkirk players look to restart the final. Stephen Turnbull with the raised arm. That again is contested just on the, the very edge of the, the 10 metre line. Melrose are judged to have knocked forward. Donald Crawford just had a rueful expression on his face as he gets back to his feet there. And McVicker will be ready to feed the ball into this first scrum of the final. And Robin, these are important moments for both these sets of players, particularly when there's a score at early doors. They, they are, and if Selkirk had sort of done their homework on the Melrose semi against Jed then they, they may well have seen that this Melrose scrum can get got at Jed drove them off the ball on more than one occasion in that semi-final Harry Makowski wearing four for Melrose McVicker in round the corner a little bit of blind side to work with caught on halfway recycled by McComb through the hands there of Robert Cook little untidy Selkirk pick up Grubber kick with the left boot, kick and chase is on here now, Callum Anderson plays a little bit of football, that goes towards the corner, can he gather and pick up to work it in towards the corner, Melrose cover defence is good, slows up the Selkirk attack, which remains just inside that 22, floated pass out there, job now, weighs up the options out towards the right hand side and round he go once more and Selkirk are in for a second score, and that was a very well constructed try. Finlay Whelans was the man occupying some space out on that right hand side, arcing the run round, not underneath the post, but again spread very wide from left to right and very effective play from this Selkirk side. Yeah, no, again, it, it, pretty similar to the first try in many ways. They just a little bit of patience, keep the ball, work the edges again. And uh, maybe maybe a little bit slack defence from Melrose, but well worked by Selkirk and great hands there and a great finish. Yeah, is this not an arm wrestling contest? That was maybe a polite way of describing aspects <laughs> of that <laughs> semi-final. As Selkirk looked to restart once more, gathered this time by Ben Weir, who goes to deck just on the edge of the 22. Recycled ball this time. 
And Selkirk through Hutchison. Oh, he's found a gap. Up and over halfway. Now he needs some options. He needs a, an offload. He's able to feed the ball in there towards James Brown. Brown eating up the ground. It's allowed to bounce. And taken on there by Makowski on this left-hand side again. Crawford occupying a position out on the left-hand side. You can see him slamming the fist on the turf there because he felt, well, he's wanting to add to his tally. He was a, a key component in the attack for Melrose in that semi-final win. And the line-out now quickly taken. Selkirk are able to win it. McVicker with the, the pass back in towards that 22. And again, they're building patiently. Solid challenge coming in once again by Donald Crawford in defence this time. It's stripped and Crawford now going for the corner. Can he back himself? Offload on the deck is a good one. And again Melrose, well they're slowed up. The momentum has dropped ever so slightly. It's recycled by Colvin. Colvin goes to deck. Crawford coming in once again but uh, this time it's a Selkirk penalty. Unable to release good covering defence there from Selkirk. And they've started well in the attack, but uh, showing a, an element of steel in defence as well. Yeah, really, really great defence by Selkirk. And Melrose just forcing those last passes. And, and uh, obviously, we've been behind two tries. They're desperate to get back in the game and maybe just, just losing their composure a bit at the wrong time. But it's now Melrose on that left-hand side. In towards Crawford once again. Has to stop and check. Almost slips there. Tries to evade a challenge coming towards him. Up towards the 22. Inside they go again. Colvin over the ball as well but once more they go into contact and again they're covered off very well and effectively by Selkirk and this is uh, eating up valuable time in this first half with Melrose pressing and probing but uh, really with one exception unable to get close towards that five metre line. Yeah, we spoke in the f- first semi-final that Selkirk were involved in about how both them and Gallen need to get their back together from a discipline perspective and I would imagine Scott White has picked up on that, laid down the law because Selkirk's discipline in this game thus far has been, a, you know, it's been impeccable. If I was in the Melrose huddle, I'd be telling them if we're going alone, somebody's got to be there to make sure we retain the ball and keep moving it. It's vital that Melrose get the next try. If if it goes three tries nil, uh, Selkirk, I think that'll be it. Do Melrose take the plunge and throw Pilcher on right now? <laughs> yeah, well, might not be a bad idea, especially when you're looking for quick fire tries to get back in the game. Well, he has that X-factor element that the crowd, I'm sure, will hope to see during the final as Selkirk restart then, leading by 12 points to nil. Melrose winning that uh, restart there through Ben Weir on the the right-hand side. Colvin then on the edge of the 22. It's Melrose with the opportunity now to build from a a deeper-lying position, running into Melrose traffic, rather Selkirk traffic in the the form of Andrew Grant-Satte. And he gets back to his feet. A little tap and go there uh, once more. And Archie Pulcher is indeed on the park. And we'll see when he, he's going to be first involved in the action. But this is a, a good run here. Stroon Hutchison up, but just short of the, the 22. Tackle. And it was indeed, just as you say, Robin, a, a fine stop there from Selkirk. Because also using the touchline to good effect there. But he, he still had to be tracked back and stopped. And he was. Underarm thrown again from McVicar. And Melrose again pressing through Colvin. Looking to do some damage. Recycle ball. Hutchison once again. Two to his left hand side. One is Crawford. Now an opportunity here for Pilcher. Towards the corner. Wrapped round the ankles. Reinforcements coming in in the form of Hutchison. On now towards Weir. Weir is forced to deck now. Looking to recycle ball. Penalty to Selkirk though. But a movement... As Weir had gone to the deck, Pilcher gets himself back in position as Selkirk looking to play downfield. And uh, they've been asked a few more questions in the start of the second half. The dynamics have changed a little bit. That's because Melrose, uh, as I seen in the first half, there was no support. They were isolated runners. Now they're keeping the ball for longer periods, putting more pressure on the Selkirk defence. A little bit unlucky, but that was definitely a penalty. He did do the extra roll. That's taken well in the air by the aforementioned Archie Pilcher. Now with a little offload towards Brody Young. Of course, drafted in from Watsonian's ranks and he's forced into touch. 
That's a good line-out win in the air, and McVicker is very keen to get on with it as Selkirk measure the passes inside their own 22. Oh. They're confident. Oh, a lovely piece of play down the left-hand side, and away they go once more, and there's a slip at an important time, and it's a one-on-one situation opening up here. Brilliant acceleration just on the angle, and once again, Cottrell showing what he can do. A wonderful piece of play, and Ryan Cottrell was the man tracking the best part of 80 metres there to finish things off. We did wonder about his fitness and freshness after a, a relatively early exit from that first semi-final. But how about that? Quality from Ryan Cottrell. He, he has got wheels. He, he has got a great understanding of the game. And he ran the great line here on the inside. And once he broke, he was gone. Uh, and, he, you know, he, he did have to show a, a fair bit of gas to get there. And it, a great try. And probably probably is enough to, to win this now. I think in it as well. I think the, the offload of the day. He had sucked in two men. You know, he showed the pace. He showed the defence. Now all the skills. He, he, he has been the man yeah. in this final. He has done a bit of everything, hasn't he? You know, for a young player, that, that's tremendous. And as you say... What an offload oh yeah and he's taking a leave of absence now well deserved yeah he's certainly done his bit and Robin you immediately pointed to that uh, when it happened has been a you know a key moment because uh, Cottrell was coming on to the pass at a rate of knots and the acceleration shown was crucial but now it's Crawford Crawford then got a couple in the semi-final he's going to be tracking his way down that right wing towards the corner he touches down there was three players closing them down to deny him space underneath those posts Hutchison asks for the ball and has to convert from out wide and that is just going to drift wide off the upright. So a response from Melrose as they very quickly make their way back towards halfway. But uh, the clock is very much the enemy now. Little grubber from Hutchison. Colvin goes with him. Colvin receives the pass now from Hutchison. He evades the challenge coming in from McVicker. Floated pass over the head then of Colvin. Melrose again. Brody Young over the head there. Once more on this left-hand side. Weir has to stop and check. Tries to find a gap in between two Selkirk defensive players there as Melrose pick up once more through Hutchison again floating the pass out towards Crawford he's got Colvin to his right hand side ball goes to, almost goes to deck anyway but Melrose now are retaining possession but they know that they're having to almost play kitchen sink seven rugby now as Hutchison into the 22 needs some options out now towards Weir Weir tries oh. to back himself what a tackle there inside the 22 reinforcements coming in Melrose now the one or two players cutting tired figures but they've got to find a little bit more as Colvin now with the goose step Colvin rolling back the ears trying to do something in Melrose colours with Crawford picking up once more on now towards Hutchison Hutchison stops, checks, works his way is able to at least offload on the deck picked up by Weir Melrose, it's all Melrose at the moment but they're chasing down three tries to one in this final deep into second half time in this 90th playing of the Erlston Sevens, Melrose looking at once again to find some space. Ball carrier there is stopped some way short there. Flanagan it was that was uh, slowed up just on the deck and the referee brings play back for a penalty and Colvin takes the quick tap looking at the options there a two and one situation perhaps opening up it's back towards Weir again Weir goes to deck and Selkirk applauding their defensive effort there and you have to say guys is that period of play and the fact Melrose have come away without any points on the board at this stage is that going to be decisive have Selkirk just about squeezed through yeah I think that last period of play probably typifies this final in one go up the way Selkirk defended there is is has won them the tie through the whole tie. I think Melrose have just come unstuck. They couldn't break them down. As they look to regroup once more, Selkirk playing it confidently along their own five metre line. Another stop and check and just round the corner there. Callum Anderson up and over halfway. Now he looks at the options. This could be icing on the cake stuff here for Selkirk. And they're going to be in for a score. Lachlan Ferguson will saunter in underneath the post. Great try to round things off for Selkirk. This has been a Selkirk performance in this particular game. They've just got Scott White stamped all over it. Attack, defence, knowing what to do at the right time. And they've been fully deserving of this. Neil Hennigan, well, to be fair, a few of us were... If we'd uh, been offered a pound to put a bet on the, the final, we might have suggested that Melrose were going to do just enough to, to win this one. But uh, all credit to Selkirk. Their first success here since 2010. They come good when it really matters. Yeah, I mean, all the way through the tournament, I think Melrose have played the prettier stuff. Um, but as it goes to show in the final there, uh, Selkirk just 
uh, unbelievable in defence, and that, that wins your ties in tournaments. And the bit of class they did get come from Whelan's, and he, he just, you know, that that try that he gave to Cottrell for to run in was was a belter, and uh, fully deserved the. Uh, you're probably one of the tries of the tournament, and Selkirk have worked really hard over the over the piece at most tournaments they've been at, and I think I think deep down we probably a lot of people knew they had one in them, and uh, today's been their day. Yeah, well, Selkirk's last appearance on the silverware was back in 2010 when their name was engraved in the Ernston Sevens Trophy after success that afternoon, and 12 years on they're able to defeat Melrose. Aside, they've played three times in the past in this tournament final. Selkirk then congratulations to them, commiserations to Melrose, a fine final and the suitors have cause to celebrate this bank holiday weekend with victory here at Els. Well, Finlay, about a year ago you were representing Selkirk Youth, winning yeah. uh, a, a tournament there. Fast forward to Earlston, and uh, you're in the the full Selkirk squad, and your yeah. player of the tournament as well. I know it's uh, it's quite amazing to be fair. It's uh, been a big year um, for youth club, and obviously coming up into playing with the seniors, uh, it's been a big step up. But the older lot, uh, they've been amazing. You can't fault them. Uh, speaking to us younger boys, helping us along when times have been tough, and just bringing us along and being a part of such a great group of a great group of boys really makes a difference and it's just it's a pretty special day obviously everyone's really happy today and going into next week uh, off the back of this just gives all the boys a load of confidence and um, which i think is what really what was really needed uh, especially after a double weekend bodies are sore energy levels might not be as high so the boys excellent it was just a very good day